Welcome back. Another key use case for Windows Automation is being able to manage services uh, in a variety of ways. And so we're going to look at stopping a service that's normally started and we'll manipulate it a little bit and then we'll see how Tower can help us uh, get it back where we wanted it to be. So this is a basic uh, Windows service stop job template. Uh, it points at the stop service playbook and we'll go ahead and take a look at that here briefly. And it is looking to um, actually stop the spooler. And once again, these are very primitive examples of playbooks. I can't stress enough. Normally these would be packaged inside of roles. There'd be you know, quite a bit more to them, but to distill what we're talking about here, um, usually it's helpful to have fewer lines to say, uh, communicate some of those things. So um, we should also show that um, the service right now, the, the principal or service that we're working with, go ahead and refresh that. And we look for the principal or we do see, expand this out so it's a little bit more visible. We do see that the service is in a status of a running state and the startup type is set to automatic. So let's go ahead and stop this service. It should be harmless to do this. So we'll go ahead and launch the job template. See this in a pending state. Now it's in a running state here. And Again, we've turned up verbosity on this a little bit more than you normally would need to have some of this information being printed into the screen. But we are looking to stop the service here. If WinRM is cooperating today, this should go pretty quickly. And indeed, it seems like it's already finished. Looks like it's in an okay state and that it did make a change. And so let's take a peek at the principal or service now and see what's going on. So before it was running, now it's no longer running. Um, it is still set up as a startup type of automatic. And so let's go ahead and make a change there and apply that. And so you can think of use cases where maybe you're making certain modifications and now you need to somewhat reset the environment back to the state that it should be in. And so there are a variety of schemes that we could take to do that. But a simple one, as we covered in a previous video, is basically to set up a job that undoes whatever you have done. Um, so that that is sort of the, the reset mechanism, however you want to choose to do it. So. We also have a service start job template. In this case, it points to the start service. And I'll go ahead and just show the start service here. And what it's doing is it's starting the service again. And the key line for this is the start mode set to auto. Once again, I did change this to a manual start type. Um, and so now actually reverting it entirely, not just the change that I made with Ansible previously, but changes I didn't make with Ansible, now wanting to get them back to the initial state that we wanted it the system to be in, um, that's very practical to do with Ansible as long as we know that the auto uh, start type should be there for us. So we go ahead and launch that. As we're waiting for that to pull up, I should also say that this is one of the key differentiators for Ansible as well, in that being that it is push based and it's not necessarily trying to maintain a desired state at any given time, is actually a powerful construct to have because it gives you the maximum amount of flexibility. If you know that something like the startup type should be in auto mode, then you can set that. But you're not necessarily fighting with the system ever on what it thinks the service state should be. You're actually basically telling it specifically what's there and it does exactly what it's supposed to do and, and really nothing more. So here, this is now in an okay state and change. And with any luck, when we do the refresh, we'll see, yes, it's back to running and it's back to automatic. And so that is uh, managing services.